All right, time for our last video on hypothesis testing, or our last type of hypothesis test, I should say. Uh, we're going to talk about a hypothesis test about the standard deviation. Um, and so, you know the process, same process, a new test statistic, chi-squared, that should look familiar to what we talked about in Chapter 9. Um, when we defined, before we talked about the confidence interval, we defined this new variable called a chi-squared variable, and so that's going to be our test statistic now. So back to this uh, National Library of Medicine, uh, there actually is a, a known, uh, from the National Library, a known standard deviation. So what if we're wondering if this particular class, uh, if the resting heart rates varies differently uh, than Americans in general. So the key here is that we're wondering if it varies differently. So that parameter is the standard deviation. Um, we've got a known standard deviation, the status quo is the population. And our question is, do they vary differently? So we're going to have another two-tailed test. We're going to just say, do we think it is not equal to 12? And then again, the 5% the level of significance. We should be clear here, if you recall, the confidence interval for standard deviation or variance had a very strict requirement. It said, regardless of the sample size, your population must be normally distributed. So if you recall, we, we did that already. We did that check and we say, okay, you know, we're not certain, but it certainly seems like this could come from a normally distributed population. So, null and alternative hypotheses. The null hypothesis, status quo, we're the same as everybody else. Alternative, that we're different. We have a different standard deviation. Level of significance, again, 0.05. Test statistic and p-value. Let's close some windows here. So stat, now we're going to do variant stats. Uh, one sample and we have the data, yep, with data. And you'll notice that this is a variance stat here, so you got to be careful. This is hypothesis test about a variance, so you need to square the null hypothesis or standard deviation, unless you're given the variance. In this case, we were given, if you recall, we were given the standard deviation, and so we need to square that for the variance. Uh, and again, yeah, yeah, there we go. So compute, and there are our results. We have a chi-square of about 11.59 and a p-value that's small, but not really that small. Certainly not below our threshold. So um, <clears throat> again, we put in 144 for the variance, and then we got this uh, chi-square and p-value. And um, let's see here, 0.1412 not less than our threshold, so we say, nope, do not reject. It's not less than our level of significance, and there's not enough evidence then to support the claim that, whoa, the resting heart rate for this, oh boy, <laughs> this class is different from the, from Americans in general, all right. <clears throat> All right, so we had a p-value of 0 0.1412, small but not less than our alpha. So we say, nope, not enough evidence to support the claim that the resting heart rate is different from Americans in general. So that's it, just one quick example from 10.4. Once you get the rhythm of hypothesis testing and you kind of, it's all about, just like the confidence intervals, about knowing which path to go. So in fact, while we're on it, let's just do 10.4 or 10.5, the last section. We'll do it in this video as well. Uh, trying to determine what method to you use. So what, what hypothesis test do you apply? So are we looking at a mean, which is an average? And again, here you have to have either be normally distributed or have a sample size of at least 30 with no outliers. Um, is it a percent or a proportion that you're looking at? And so you have to have n times p times 1 minus p be at least 10 and have a sample size less than 5% of your population. And is it uh, a variability, uh, volatility? Does it vary more? Or just straight up, is it talking about the standard deviation or the variance? And that's assuming there that the population is normally distributed. Now, under the mean, there are technically two there. We, we did the typical one where the standard deviation is not known. It's very rare for you to know the standard deviation, but technically there are two. Um, you can do a z-stat. If it's not known, the typical situation, a t-statistic, that's more common. So 
So I've got three examples here. Um, according to the ECC website, the average age is about 28.2 years for ECC students. So suppose we collect data, we find a sample average of 20.3 with a standard deviation of 2.3. Is there enough evidence to support the claim that the average age of Math 120 online students is less than 28.2? So we're looking at average age. So the parameter here is, is the mean. We have a sample size of 30. We have a sample mean of 20.3 a sample standard deviation of 2.3. So this is a test about the mean, the popu of mu, the population mean age of Math 120. I guess I should, should say Math 120 online students. That's what this particular example was talking about. All right, um, next question about IQs. We know from previous examples the standard deviation is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 15. This is of IQs. Suppose we wonder if ECC students, um, their IQs have more variation. So variation, kind of some red flags there. So the parameter there is the variance or the standard deviation. We have a sample of 30 students. We find a sample standard deviation of 16.2. Um, let's see here. Uh, I guess we didn't highlight the alpha there, but there's the 5%. So this is a test about sigma, the standard deviation of IQ scores for ECC students. Last one, we're told that um, approximately 41.2% of Americans ages 18 to 24 voted in the 2012 election. We wonder if the percentage for ECC students is different from this. Keyword there, percentage. So the parameter here is a proportion. We have a random sample of 200 students. So, whoops, N is not 30, clearly. N is 200. Sorry, got to fix that. Uh, we have a 103 of them did vote, so we have a sample proportion of 103 out of 200. Uh, so this is a test about P, the proportion of students. So all of those, you can see here each time I'm kind of highlighting some of these keywords, and that's what you're going to need to be good at, because when it comes to the final, this part of the final, um, there's going to be all of the new stuff on one part of the final, chapters 10, 11, 12, and 13. And all these hypothesis tests, you're going to have one of each, and they're going to be all mixed up. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. So you're going to have to really parse out what is the parameter, that key thing about parameter P, it's about a percentage, which is a proportion. That's going to be huge that you can take that, pull that out from the problem, and know how to proceed from there. All right, so that is it for this video. Um, hopefully that was educational, and feel free to post any comments uh, below.